guys. Welcome back to another week of enrichment class. That's our last week. Mm. I've had a lot of fun with you guys so far. Um, so this, this last week is very special. Today, my guest speaker is, ta-da! It's my husband! Hello. You wanna introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Robert Anderson. I am a elementary school uh, orchestra teacher, and I teach mostly violin, viola, cello, and bass. So. You know, Hi, the huge. And then, you know, we are. Ah, yes. We have matching Sam Partners for Life. So, uh, quick, quick backstory, because I think you guys would find this super cute and uh, can appreciate this. We are, I'm gonna sit a little higher because I feel like I'm too short next to you. You, you guys will see the height difference when, <laughs> when we stand and perform for you. I'm very <laughs> tiny, he's very tall. But we actually met in orchestra, uh, playing in orchestra. He's, he was my stand partner. He is my stand partner, because he still is. So I'm concert master, and then he sits next to me, he turns my pages, and then we started dating, and then, ta-da, we got married. Ow. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is our beautiful love story. So I'm actually gonna tell you guys a little bit about this. So Stand Partners for Life is a, a cute little motto that we have for each other, but it's actually a podcast. So if you guys are looking for another music podcast, this is a podcast that's run by uh, the principal, no, not the principal, the concert master for uh, LA Philharmonic. You guys know Gustavo Dudamel with his crazy hair and he conducts and it's just like waves, right? It kind of looks like, um, it kind of, it kind of looks like your hair, William, actually, when it's, when it's fully grown <laughs> out, right? He moves his hair and it's like his fro just conducts with him. So, uh, that, that famous orchestra, yes. Uh, he and his wife have a podcast called Stand Partners for Life and I've been listening to a lot of it this summer during quarantine, so. And then it just worked out so perfectly that we are also stand partners for life. And fun fact, our conductor actually married us. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, little love story there. Um, today we are going to be talking about communication without music. Now, it's, yeah, like that, right? <laughs> just, <laughs> just talking like that. So, who is at the front of the orchestra? that tells us what to do as a group, as a team effort. Type it in. What are we called? We use this thing. Who can tell us what that is? Hey, yes, a conductor. So today we're gonna to be going over a couple of different things. I'm gonna be going over and you guys will be joining me. You guys will be conducting with me today. We're gonna be working on how to breathe, what cues look like, and then we're gonna be talking about what that looks like on our instruments. You're gonna see me take the lead and show, and you're gonna see Mr. Anderson follow through. He's gonna follow my lead, and then we're gonna switch off a little bit. So I want you guys to kind of see all of the different things we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna start with a simple four pattern. I'm gonna change this so I can see everyone, if you can. And if you are comfortable with it, please turn on your camera so we can all conduct together. <clears throat> oh, you have another. Another one joining us. Would you like a baton? No. Do you want a, you want a pencil? Sure. If you guys would like, you can grab the nearest writing utensil, utensil next to you. That is a big, that's my baton case. <laughs> Not quite a baton. I would pick like a pencil or a pen, guys. It's very thin. So parts of a baton, just like parts of an instrument, we have. We have different parts. We have the shaft. We have the handle. Sometimes it's called the bulb. We are going to hold it nice and gently. It's just an extension of your arm. So we're going to just pretend like it's just going all the way out. Yes, very nice. So we're gonna start with a simple four pattern. What we're gonna do is just, we're gonna start in the middle. We're gonna go down. We're gonna go into our heart. We're gonna go out. And then we're gonna go up. 
Yeah, you guys got it. So we're gonna try that a little bit faster, okay? We're gonna try with one hand. So we're gonna go down into our hearts, out, and then up. Good, so down, in, out, up. Down, in, out, up. You guys got it. See, all of you guys can just go up there and start conducting your own orchestras. Beautiful. So this is just a simple four pattern. We have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, what I'm gonna start with is what a conductor starts with a cue, or sometimes in the middle of a cue, in the middle of a piece, what they'll do is they'll look at your section. They know, oh, the first violins have the melody. They better get ready. You guys may, might get a cue, and then you are boom. That's you. You're it. That's your part. Does that make sense? So we're gonna start with uh, if this works. I know that there's a little bit of a delay, right? But if this works, what I want us to do, if this works for everyone, <laughs> I'm really, fingers crossed, I'm going to give a pickup, which is that cue, and then when I land right here, down, my downbeat, I want everybody to go, surprise, at the same time. Just give me a big, so I know that everybody sees at the same time, and if it works correctly, everybody is just going to do a big, at the same time. <laughs> And it's just big enough for me to see because the screen's a little small right now. Okay, ready? So here's my cue. Yeah, you're gonna be earlier than everybody else. I know. But everybody else was pretty much together and that was really nice. Let's try that one more time. If you don't have your screen, uh, like on multi people, on the multi grid, you should do that. This way you can see everybody doing it at the same time as you. It's really neat. Let's try that again, ready? I might do it a little bit different this time. Just watch. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good, yeah. So I did all of that without saying one word. You guys knew when to go, and that's exactly what a conductor's job is. Giving you guys cues for that go moment when you're ready to play that first note, all right? So now we're gonna move on to, to the good stuff. We're gonna play a couple of pieces for you. Uh, the first one I want to start with is, let's start with the slow one. Okay. So the slow one has um, these long, long melodic melodies, okay? I'm going to actually, let's run through the first one. I want you guys to listen. There is a slow section. There is another section where the tempo changes, right? And then this is something that we can read in the music. It tells us that we're going a little faster without speaking any words. And then the other thing is, I'm gonna give a little bit of a cue to him. So because he's my stand partner and we know each other so well, I can, and this is, this should go for anybody who, if I just met him for the first time and I can, I can do this with him. There's this type of communication that all musicians learned. I'm trying to instill upon you. So I might want to go a little bit faster. You're going to see me move a little bit. And we're going to, you're going to see me even pulse the tempo, the tempo a little bit too. Okay. Uh, and then we'll also, I really want you to watch our cutoff, like our very last note. Our last note's very obvious. We hold it out, you know, just like any other, any other piece. We hold it out. And then I want you to watch, we're going to cut off. We're going to breathe. You're going to see a little lift at the end. All right. We also haven't warmed up, so. Sorry, we haven't played today together. Last time we played was um, <laughs> when we lost power and we were bored and we we're like, what are we gonna do? Let's, let's play some music. Let's do some duets. I'm gonna push this. So this is a piece by uh, so uh, Shostakovich. And, oh good. I don't need any. Hopefully my boat isn't hissing like that. Yeah, see, do you see the height difference? you see the height difference here? We always argue about stands, because you know how your stand has to be a certain <laughs> height? So we have like two separate stands right now, because he's too tall to use my short little stand. So the very beginning is really slow. So what I'm gonna do with the cue, I'm gonna actually make this a little make this bigger again. Since the beginning is nice and slow, I'm going to give a big slow cue. You're going to see me go. 
and then we come in together. Do you see how he followed me? His motion followed me too. He's mimicking me. He's only mimicking me because I have the first violin part. But if he had the first violin part, then I would be following him in this instance. So that's an example of us changing some tempos in the middle, okay? And then we have some other parts where we're really trying to push the tempo. And then at the end, we did like a little lift, mm -hmm. right? I can just give me a little pulse and then it's just like, and then we're off together. You get, did you guys see all those little things? Um, there was another thing in the middle that I want to go over again together, and I want you guys to see if you can pick up what we do that's a little bit different. Um, can we bring those parts out? Okay, so we're going to do this section. Okay, so I'm going to do something. I'm going to physically do something, and I want to see if you guys can see the difference in this one section. tell me what we did that was different and there's something that I had to do to initiate that someone's complimenting me on vibrato hey thanks <laughs> anybody in the chat or you guys can unmute yourselves that's fine you're not a ready crowd <laughs> you switch tempos switching tempos is one we did that was a brand new tempo but there's something even in more in particular. I don't the know. Dynamics? Yes, thank you. I don't know who said that. Um, <laughs> but yes, dynamics. So we did it really loud. And then when we want, when I wanted to something soft, contrasting, I went, oh, we're going to get a little bit softer. So we're just going to bring it in. So sometimes your conductor does that with their baton, right? So if they want something nice and big. They'll be like, you get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So sometimes you'll see your conductor do that and you're like, why do they go from big to small? So now you know. 
<laughs> we want you to change tempos. And there's something we can still do small and legato. That doesn't mean always staccato. You know, sometimes we think small, it's like one, two, three, four. And sometimes that is the case, but sometimes we can still do soft and legato, just like what we did over here. Okay. So this next one, this is a different movement from the same piece. This is a waltz. Now, we're going to try this with, oh, I'm going to take this out on my phone. We're going to, I'm going to show you the difference of tempos. We're going to talk about tempo a little bit here. Let's see if you guys can hear my, that's slow. Well, if it's a little, just so straight. Do you want to do it with a three click or a one click? I mean, it's been one, two, three, okay. one, two, three. Okay, so I want, can you guys hear the metronome? Just give me a collective nod, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put on the metronome. We're gonna play this piece, and when I say straight, that means we're always gonna be with the metronome. We're not gonna take any time, okay? So we're focused on the metronome, just keep going straight. Um, can we just do, can we find the phrase to stop? Yeah, you you'll watch me. He'll watch me, because I'm gonna stop, and you're gonna see him follow me when I, wherever I feel like it's a good place to stop. <laughs> This is a good test. We're going to do the same exact section, okay? But we're going to take a little bit more time. We're going to take what we call liberty. We're going to, we're going to do some rubatos, which means slowing, pushing, pulling the tempo. And he's, he's going to have to follow me, all right? But don't worry. Next page, I'm going to have to follow him. We, we pass it back and forth. You come closer to, towards me. I promise I don't smell today. I, I put on deodorant today. I know, but then they can't see your body. I'll move closer to you. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> and pull those tempo, tempos. Um, and then this next part, I'm going to work. Let's try to keep going. Actually, no, I want to skip. Okay. Can we skip to the, the part of that? Yeah, but it's two and a half bars before that. You want to do it there or you want to do Where that part is? No. That's, uh, okay, I see where you are. One, two, three, four bars before that with a pickup. One, two, three, four, half note. Okay. Yeah, start right on the half note. Right on the half note. So you come in with me. Thank you. 
just so you know, the music doesn't even end there. I just gave him that that look in the eye. And I was just like, this is where we end. And he followed me. See, that's all we needed. Okay. <laughs> now, did you guys notice something happened in the middle of that section? Can anybody tell me? Just type that in or unmute yourselves, either or. There's something that happened. Did anybody notice something happened? Nothing. Did I have the melody the whole time? Could you guys tell? I get some nods and I get some head shakes. Anybody? Anybody want to take a guess? Yes, William, we switched. That's right. So there was a section where our, our parts actually switched and he had the melody and I started following him and then they came back to me and then he had to follow me. So we're going to play a little bit of that. I want you to hear the melody. Yeah, I'm going to start right there, but he's not going to play his part. I want you to hear the melody and then I'm going to have him play his part separately. So we go. Let's see. I'm going to try also the other thing. I played the wrong note. Um, the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to play this straight. So these are all eighth notes. This is one and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three, one, two, three. But when we play it, we, we, we don't do that one, two, three. We do one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. And we take our time. We take, we take lots of liberty here. So we're going to play it straight once. As all, to me, it's a little like, uh, like, a, like a machine, all right? So this part, this is a waltz, and we don't want it to be too much like a machine. So um, Mr. Anderson's also going to play the same exact, his part, the second violin part, and I want you to hear the harmony under it. And then he gets the melody. And then this is what happens when we switch. Then I start to play the harmony. So it's basically the same exact part, but now we're going to switch. So um, can we play it straight? So I want you to hear where it starts to flip, okay? So I'm going to end up playing the second violin part for a brief second. He's going to end up playing the first violin part for a brief second. But what, when I say straight, we're just going to do it. One and two and three and one and two and three and. And then we're going to play it again. And then we're going to do it a little bit more free. Different conducting pattern than you were talking about before. Yes. And this is this is a three pattern. So we go down. We're not going into the heart anymore because it's a waltz. <laughs> we're going out <laughs> and then up. So down, out, up. That is your three pattern. Okay, so let's one, two, to like slow down a little bit. And I'm like, no, follow me. I want to go faster. I want to keep it straight. One, two, three. So there's always that like little push and pull. I need to sneeze, but like it's not coming out. It's that worst feeling. Anyways, now we're going to do the same exact thing, but we're going to change it up a bit. It's not going to be that same. It is going to be a three pattern, but a very weird one, two, three. Or it might be one, two, three, something like that. <laughs> we'll, we'll see.
that's another part where we, it says a tempo, which means back into tempo, yet we, we want to do our own thing there, right? So, because we like to schmaltz that out. We have a little retard here. And then this is the a tempo. One, two. But we decided we're not going to do that because we like it to be super cheesy and like super romantic. So we take our time. We're, we're like doing something completely different. So does that make sense? We're gonna play through. You wanna, you wanna, you, do you guys wanna hear the whole thing or can we just move on? <laughs> we might just play the whole thing for you guys. And then we'll get to egg smashing. <laughs> we have time. We have time to do one run through and then we'll do an egg smash. Okay. Right away, I only have two eggs. Just found, I just opened up the egg cart and I was like, oh, we only have two eggs. And so we only have time to try for two eggs. Ready? That's enough violin playing for today. Okay, so he's gonna he's gonna run upstairs and get all the uh, the other camera ready. What I'm gonna do is because we're gonna go into the kitchen because it's too messy to do it down here. You know the drill. I'm gonna pin his video once he gets up there. Some of you guys were around when we. Um, did our first interview, which was like, my husband interviewed me. This is one of the very, very first uh, classes we had before during the pandemic, but we haven't had that since. Oh, there he is. Oh yeah, we have the eggs. Okay. And then, so we're gonna kind of interview each other for all the same questions you guys, I ask you guys every week. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna just run upstairs. So. What's up? Uh, can I make mine like the main one? Yeah, I did it. Oh, okay. I pinned you. Cool. Okay, bye.
They are real eggs. <laughs> ah, like magic, right? Okay. So I know a lot of you guys have been curious to see why we're cracking some eggs, but knowing what the person in front of you or next to you is going to do next and anticipating their next move is very tricky. It's I'm really bad at that. Yeah, we had like a couple <laughs> of practice rounds with like not eggs and it was like, <sighs> so anyways, as I was saying, it's hard enough to try to anticipate somebody's move. You know, some of you guys have siblings or you're very close to it. Like even like, some, I can sometimes know what my mom's thinking without her saying a word. And I know some of you guys are like that too, right? So I'm trying to fix this. What we are gonna do is also anticipate each other's move. Let's see how well we can do this. But like I said, it's even harder when you have to do it in tempo <laughs> with a metronome. So that's what we're gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to do two different types of metronome. You wanna do a practice round first? Without the egg? Uh, uh, Without, cause I wanna save the egg for the good stuff. No, we don't need anything. We'll just share, okay. I have a little clothespin. There's a clothespin in there. So I wanna explain this to you. Some of you guys have seen this online already. You wanna come this way? So we can see your face when you smash the egg. Um, okay, so we're gonna try to do this on tempo. Let's not do 90. Oh, that's pretty fast. That's good enough, right? Sure. So what we're gonna, can you guys still hear me when I talk? I'm gonna turn this down because it's a little ear piercing. I'm gonna go one. So we're keeping a tempo, but if he takes that away, I have to anticipate that move and I have to not hit it, whatever the A. Does that make sense? When we go faster, it's a lot harder, I promise you. <laughs> so the idea is to, I have to always be aware of what he's gonna do next, but keep that tempo. So then he has to put this back down in tempo as well. Let's bring this up to like 100. That's only 100. That's only 100. Don't freak out yet. We'll do a practice round. Oh, you want to crash the egg. Anyways, that's the idea. So we're going to, this is 100. I'm going to bring it up to like, I don't know. I'm going to fail. Let's try 130 because we have two eggs. <laughs> I want you to know, <laughs> Mrs. Mizell saw the one with me say 130 and she went. <laughs> so let's try 130, guys. Uh, actually, I don't know if I left this on recording for the, for the screen like this and I kind of wish it was. Uh, do you want me to go check? Or do you want me to go check? Just can you run really quick? Yeah. Okay, and then the next thing I'll, as well, he goes and, and does that, because I want to make sure when we record this video, we can see everybody's reaction when we fail. When he fails. I don't know, there's a good chance I'm going to crack my, <laughs> I'm going to have to be washing my hands from dirty eggs, too. <laughs> um, we'll still do questions if you guys have any questions. <gasps> That's like magic. Okay, good, thanks. Um... So get your questions ready. Don't worry, I'll ask him if, what would he would do if he's thrown a penguin in the freezer. All right, 130. With a real egg. Oh boy. Loser has to clean up. That's like doubly bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's gotta clean up the mess. Don't rush. All right, this is 
too easy. We're up in the antiques here. I'm bringing this to 150. That was really hard. You're better than practice around. I'm sweating. Well, so we have to actually hit if we miss. All right, so we're, we're going to slam down. So we can't do this anymore. We have to slam. <laughs> no, we can't have the same time. <laughs> I should. We're going full force now. I'm All just right. smacking it. Full hits. That's gross. It's like splat. <laughs> oh, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. The last egg. Slowly spills out all over the place. We're bumping to this up to 180. How high does it go? How high does this go? We're gonna go up to like 210. <laughs> <laughs> this goes up to over 400, so I, I doubt it. Oh my god. Put it to 200. All right, 200. Oh man. I would have just locked it. You're gonna make a mess again. Why are you fucking? It's for visuals. <laughs> We're trying to make a high quality video here. They need to see the yellow. <laughs> the yolk. Oh, the poster. It's just more dramatic. Carnage. It's a light. Oh. You're gonna start shit up. You're slowing down. You didn't hit me. Don't try. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't know where the tempo is anymore. Guys. <laughs> How many eggs were harmed in the making of this video? Just two. Just two. Oh. I don't think this is suitable for Zoom. Oh, it's fine. Type in those questions. In the meantime, 
Rob, can you answer the following questions? Yes. Can you guys still hear him? Okay. What would you do if you found a penguin in your freezer? I would call you to come look at it. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would love the penguin in the freezer. That's a great answer. Thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> Is it like a talking penguin? Uh, no, just a, just a normal life penguin. It's not magical or special. Just a normal penguin. I don't think we would ever have enough room in the freezer for a penguin. <laughs> We have room for like a small, for like a small penguin. A baby penguin. I've held a penguin before. I had a picture somewhere and then I lost it. Oh yeah, okay, so they, okay, are you ready for this? I think I have my own answer. Mm -hmm. Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? Do I have any weapons? Uh, Do I have anything to defend them off with? It's just me. It's just you. No it's violin. Just, it's just six foot tall you. No violin, no bow, no music stand, no pencil. Just you fighting one horse sized duck or 100 duck sized horses. I think the 100 duck sized horses. <sighs> I would fight one horse sized duck. But think about the power behind that thing. But then I only have to focus on one thing. And you're not good at focusing on more than on one yeah, thing. You just do like sweeping. Horses can kick. Like... <laughs> yeah, but that's a lot of kicking if you were to kick them all away. I also have really long arms. So I, I could reach, I can push them out. I would, I would befriend the duck sized horse and then ride it. Whoa. I know. That's pretty incredible, right? It is. It's like a storybook. Is this like a storybook? <laughs> um, how do I, how do you like... Oh, look at their comments? Yeah. I don't know on the iPad if we yeah. can do that. Why not? More, uh, go under more. No, uh, go on the other side. Go, go under more. More. Why, ah. What are you doing? I don't know. Chat. Chat, there we go. Well, there's a lot of chats. 250. What do you think about two-step? You want me to go back? Oh, uh, no. We nice vibrato. Yeah, we saw that when you switched tempo. Even I'm stressed, we said that. <laughs> Williams. <laughs> what do you think about two set violin? Hey. I cannot beat Ling Ling. No, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> so much practice. Uh, two set violin is awesome. It's yeah, we love two set. Yeah, 20 videos. Yep. Um, Didn't you have a video you wanted to show? Oh, that's right. That's okay. We ran out of time. Duck horse. I have to go. Bye, Maida. What do you do if Mr. Anderson forgets to turn the page? Oh, oh, that's such a good question, Anna and Abigail. Do you know what happened on the way home from orchestra rehearsal? Do you know how often he forgets to turn the page at the right time? Do you know how often? It doesn't happen that often. It happens all the time. It happens so often. I'm just we trying to make sure that you have it memorized. No. But yeah, that's really the answer. She everybody, everybody <laughs> in this in the Zoom chat, you guys are training to be wonderful, um, wonderful like stand partners, right? They're stand partner etiquette. He forgets to turn my pages all the time, and that's literally the only thing we ever fight about. <laughs> that's true. It's the only thing we fight about to the point we put it in the wedding vows. Thou shall turn the pages at the right time. It's in both of our vows. <laughs> Great question. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Rob, what is, let's find a good question for you. Mm, how do you practice getting better intonation? Against like a drum pitch usually. Ah, do you guys remember that from, um, Mr. Wilson, Brian Wilson, when, when we did the improv class, he did the drones with you guys. And that's exactly um, what he says, too. Yeah, so I have like a metronome that makes a really loud sound, and um, you're listening for like the pulses in the sound when you're playing against it. Because even like a note that clashes against it, I know that's what we would call dissonant in music. Um, even a note like that, is, there's like a, a, a right way for it to sound and the wrong way for it to sound. So you're listening for those pulses in the Get better yes, Carol. 
what I do for a drone is I play a double stop. I'll start with D and A to really hear the perfect fifth, mm -hmm. then E and A, the fourth, F sharp A, F natural A, and I really hear, you know, how they gel and how you get the vibrations. And that helps mm -hmm. that I don't have to put on a drone sound. <laughs> yeah, I like to do that for octaves too, especially mm -hmm. when I hear if, oh, octaves are so hard to get into. <laughs> and that's, that's one of the biggest, easiest ones, you know, sometimes I know the younger students, it's hard to play double steps and it's hard to hear if you're doing a third in tune or something like that. But it's easier to hear when it's an octave because it's the same exact note. Yeah. You will hear, is it clashing or does it sound like it's one straight line? Um, this is a good question. What would you do if you weren't a musician? I feel like we've, we've talked a lot about this <laughs> during the pandemic. Yeah, it's true. Um, I'd probably went into some sort of like, uh, like, I'd have probably went into some sort of like uh, therapy or like psychotherapy type of thing. I still wanted to help people and uh, I even considered doing uh, music therapy for a little while. So probably something like that, like uh, a therapist or a psychologist or something like that. I thought you wanted to go into finance. Well, that would be like something completely different. Oh, okay. <laughs> Carol's like, <"Hey." laughs> That's what her husband does. <laughs> um, favorite food? I love noodles and chicken nuggets. I love my chicken nuggies. Tacos! Oh. It's the one thing we disagree on. She doesn't like tacos. No, I don't. I just don't get tacos. I'm sorry, guys. Favorite ice cream flavor? Hmm. Favorite ice cream flavor? I don't think I have one. Oh, pocket nuts, chocolate, peanut butter. Boom, have one. Oh, the, the Ben and Jerry, the fish food. Oh, really I've good. never seen you buy that. It's so good. Okay. <laughs> yes, I do know what a doge is. I don't know where my dog is right now. But I do know it's a doge. Favorite composer? Or did they skip that? Uh, opinion on Hilary Hahn and Yo-Yo Ma. We love them. Yeah. Oh, what's really cute. One of the first gifts he ever got me was a Hilary Hahn um, a signed album. A her. signed album, like a, like a, blah, 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 blah. an LP album, like the big one, like a record player. <laughs> we have our, our record player in the other room. But yeah, I got, a, we got two signed albums by her. That was really neat. I thought that was a neat gift. Oh, we were skipping questions. How many instruments do you play? We play them all. Um, <laughs> that's a, you, well, I should say we went to music school. We both did. So we had to learn how to play all of the instruments up to like a fourth or fifth grade level. So. If you ask a music teacher who went to music school, usually the instruments we've learned how to play is just all. Uh, I'm, there's a lot of questions. Favorite piece to play? I do not have a Shiba Inu, but she looks like a Shiba Inu. She's just super fluffy, but I know what a doge is. Like I know the doge is a Shiba Inu. Anyways, uh, what was that question? Yo-Yo Ma always looks like he's stifling a giant's knees. <laughs> It's cello that face. cello, we call that cello face. <laughs> yeah, so you guys know exactly what we're talking about when they're playing it. Like, mm, nose up in the air and you're like eyes closed and you're like, <sighs> that's cello face, guys. Sometimes violinists have cello yeah, face. Yeah, if you ever watch Joshua Bell play violin, he's got violin face. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, I don't think I really do it. I think I do it every once in a while. <laughs> uh, viol viola or cello? Oh. Cello, 100% every day. Sorry, guys. Sorry for, sorry to all my viola students in this room. <laughs> but the cello is the closest to the human voice, and it speaks to me on another level because of its range. That's just me. Go ahead. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want this cello. Yeah, I figured as much. Favorite composer, favorite piece. My favorite composer is Brahms. I wish we were downstairs because I would show you my, my bust of Brahms. I have a like a giant head bust of Brahms. He's always looking down on me. Love him. I don't know if I have a favorite piece. Yeah, no, that's too hard. Oh, I have a favorite piece. I do. It's the Brahms double concerto for violin and cello. It is the most epic thing ever. If you do not know it, please look it up. It is fantastic. What's your favorite wind or brass instrument? Well, I know your answer. Yeah, I know my answer. My favorite, mine is the French horn because it's the other closest to the human voice. Yeah, I like the sound of the French horn very much too. Uh, favorite composer, we played his piece, uh, Shostakovich. Yeah. My favorite composer. Oh, we don't have it on the fridge anymore. 
Oh, we had a, a funny picture of somebody holding a taco because his reaper food's a taco. And then it says, Shosh, taco, 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 bitch. Because <laughs> the way you spell Shosh Takovich, it looks like Shosh Taco Bitch if you're, if you're not a musician. So we had that on the fridge for a little while. Mm. What is this question? Oh, why did you start to play violin? You're going to answer that question. I'm going to turn up the AC because I'm still sweating. Okay. Um, why did I start to play? So this is actually a really funny story. Um, in fourth grade, my school did a instrument kind of like petting zoo type of thing where you got to try out the different instruments all in the gym. And maybe some of your schools still do the same thing. And I went around with a slip of paper and on that slip of paper, they would write if they thought you were good at it. Um, they would actually like write if like you were bad at it or good at it. I, I don't know if a lot of places still do this sort of thing, but when I went to school, that was what they did. And um, the ones that I got actually like good on were violin and percussion. Those are the two that I got good rank rankings on. And then when I was a senior in high school, I was talking to my teacher because I had the same teacher all the way through and I asked him, about that whole process. And he told me that because they had really low enrollment that year, they gave anybody that tried a string instrument good on the string instrument. <laughs> so it turned out that I picked the violin because I thought I was good at it, but in reality, they just picked whoever they wanted to be. <laughs> so my whole life is based on a lie, but no, not really. <laughs> but then you made a career out of it. I did. So maybe it was the right choice and then, after all. And then if you did it, we would have never met. It's true. We wouldn't have been stand partners. See? It all worked out. Why did I choose violin? Well, my parents took me to a classical music concert and I didn't fall asleep. And they were like, oh, that's a good sign. And then they just signed me up for violin lessons. So I was <laughs> like, this is cool. All right, I'll take it. Uh, okay, we've been asking a lot of our guest speakers to do this. So I want you to look into the camera. And I want you to give me the, your best dog bark. Dog bark? Yeah, you heard me. Uh, look I've into never the done this look, look into the camera. Nobody else has either. <laughs> That's pretty good. That was pretty good. Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm not going to do one. Do it. It's going to sound like a little hey, yappy. You got to do it. It's going to sound like a little yappy. Like, <laughs> you would be the cute dog. I'd be the... The little tiny one, you know? I don't know what dogs sound like when they bark. My dog doesn't bark. <laughs> she barely barks. It's very quiet. Um, what is our next one of our next questions that I want to ask you? What is your favorite kind of dog? My dog. <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite kind. I love all dogs. I like huskies. Yeah. He likes cats. That's all I can ask. Um, what is, ooh, how do you motivate yourself to practice when you don't want to practice? Hmm. With food. Oh, that's my answer. <laughs> I'm the same way. Like I'll have a snack and I'll only let myself eat the snack after I've done X number of practice. Yep. I love doing it with junk food. It's so bad. <laughs> but like, Chocolate. It's good if you have something that breaks up into small pieces because then you can really like spread it out. Chicken nuggets. Gummy bears would be my choice. Oh yeah, he, he's got a jar of gummy bears he keeps next to his desk and gummy bears, like that's, he'll have like one gummy bear if he like nails that section. And then if he gets another, there are some times where like, he's like, oh, I gotta refill the gummy bear jar. And it's like, how, like how much did you practice? And it's like, you didn't really practice enough to finish all those gummy bears. I do it for work stuff too. Like yeah, that's else. true. <laughs> um, what do you like to do besides music in your free time? I'm gonna let you answer that first because I feel like most of my stu my private students know the answer to this. I like to read books, stuff like that. Play video games. <laughs> He's got typical answers like play video games or read books. I love jigsaw puzzling. For all my private students, they're like, oh yeah, we always see a jigsaw puzzle on your on your table. Yeah. I have two over Two on there. the table now. Yeah, I finished them really quickly. Um, yeah, what is your favorite book? What is your favorite book? 
Um, I like a book called Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. It's one I, of my favorite books. I think I got only one chapter into that book. <laughs> and then There's I, a whole part where, you know, there are cats that talk to people and it's, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, my favorite book is called The Little Prince. That is my favorite book. If you have not read that, it is a fantastic book. I think they made like a movie out of it, but the movie doesn't do it justice. It's not the same. It's a very short book. It's like this thin. So, uh, opinion on Bubba? Boba? Like Boba? Like Boba Tea? Bubba? Like Boba Fett? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Please clarify. I think they mean Boba Tea. Bo Say what was that? Say that again? No, Carlos, what did you ask? Okay, like bubble tea, yeah. Somebody said the thought of bubble tea motivates me when my mom says I can get it. <laughs> that's great, that's, that's always a good, I like having a drink too. I love Harry Potter. Oh, Laura Lee, oh, Laura Lee's the one who asked that question. She knows that though. You do, you watch the movies over and over and over and over and over again. And I do. Well, over and over and over and over again. Okay, wait, 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 so let me, let me explain myself. <laughs> Um, I do read the books. I can't get comfy right now. I do read the books over and over again, but I feel like every time I learn, I read, read, read it, I always learn something new. And I do watch the movies, but like I watch the movies. They're in the background while I jigsaw puzzles, so I'm not like actually like, staring at the screen. I just need something in the background when I, when I jigsaw puzzles. You do recite movie line by line. I do know, I, I do know every line in the movies, <laughs> like all eight of them. Whatever. It's cool. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? I just want to say thank you so much to each and every one of you for giving me this opportunity to do this with you this summer. I've had an absolute blast. It's been so much fun. I want all, I'm also, if you want to rewatch any of them and kind of like redo the class, they're all on the Wake, uh, Lakeland website right now except for this episode uh, and possibly the last one. I don't remember. But um, I think all of them will be uploaded by the end of this week. You guys can go on, share with your friends. If you have any other friends in your school who also do not have a place to play their instrument, please tell them to join Lakeland. We would love to have new addition to our family and tell them how much fun we had. I really can't wait to see you guys again in just a few weeks. Uh, there's going to be more information coming out. Favorite ice cream. We already answered this. How can this chocolate peanut butter? What's yours again? The fish food, the Ben & Jerry's. Oh, ben & Jerry's fish food. <laughs> um, I'm going to put in my plug. So every guest speaker got to put in a plug. Mine is, you guys can follow me on either Facebook or Instagram. It's Sue on Music. So it's my first and last name, Sue on and then music. I do post a lot of educational things. I post videos of my students performing, uh, technique exercises. We can work on bow stuff together. Which Hogwarts house are you in? I am a, I feel like as I got older, my Hogwarts house changed. You gotta take the, the Pottermore testing. It is, I think I'm now a, Slither Claw, I think. I'm not sure, but definitely a Raven Claw. There you go. I have no idea. I think you would be a Hufflepuff. You're very loyal. Good. But you're not very brave, so I don't think you would be a Raven or, or, or a Gryffindor. You might be a Raven Claw because you're super smart, but I think you're so loyal you would be a Hufflepuff. I'll take it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? What is a slither claw? claw? A slithering raven claw, like something of the sort, you know? <laughs> well, thank you, guys. It's been fun to hear about all these. I'm glad that you all had a good time. I'm gonna miss you. Tell me about all the fun things. We can stay all stay in touch. If you have any other questions or your friends who want to join Lakeland, you could just send them our website. Okay? Bye guys! Bye.
Can you can yeah. you do the thing? <laughs> do the thing. It's on the other side. Bye. Bye. Oh, we have to do it from downstairs. Yeah, you have to cancel the dances. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.